Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tom Vick. I'm curator of film at the Freer and Sackler Galleries, which are the Smithsonian's National Museum of Asian Art. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to this afternoon's discussion with Mona Zandi Hagigi, director of the very moving film African Violet, which is included in this year's Festival of Films from Iran. Uh, the festival is streaming through Sunday in Boston, Houston, and the Washington, D.C. area. So if you haven't uh, had a chance to see all the films, you have another day or so to do so. I'd like to thank my co-presenters at the festival, Marian Luntz and Tracy Stevenson at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston, and Carter Long and Kristen Hoskins of the Department of Time and Space in Boston. And I'd also like to thank Mona Kashvi for taking time off from her very important day job as Chief Content Officer at the DC's public radio station, WAMU, uh, to translate for Ms. Hagigi today. And of course, special thanks go to the ILEX Foundation for supporting this festival for so many years, and especially during this particularly challenging time. We're very grateful for their support, especially now. Uh, I'd also like to remind everyone that as of last Friday, we've added a bonus film to the festival, Coup 53, a documentary about the MI6 and CIA-backed coup of Iran in 1953 that includes never-before-revealed archival materials. Uh, it is also streaming through tomorrow. Uh, our moderator today is Godfrey Cheshire. He is a New York-based filmmaker and critic whose writings about Iranian cinema have appeared in the New York Times, Newsweek, Film Comment, Sight and Sound, Cineast, Variety, RogerEbert.com, and other outlets. Uh, he has visited Iran seven times since the 1990s to study its cinema, and he is the author of the book Conversations with Kiro Stami and the forthcoming In the Time of Kiro Stami, Writings on Iranian Cinema. Uh, those of us who program Iranian films are very grateful to Godfrey for all the groundbreaking work he did to bring awareness uh, of Iranian cinema to the U.S., and so uh, it's an honor to have him here today. Uh, please welcome Godfrey Cheshire. Thank you, Tom, and it's great to be here, great to be a part of this festival again. It's a wonderful festival, and I'm always honored when I can have a place in it. Um, and so it's nice to uh, be able to talk to uh, the director of this lovely film, uh, African Violet, uh, Mona uh, Zandi Hagi, who is joining us from Iran. And I will say this is a particular pleasure for me because um, the star of the film, uh, uh, Fatime Matamid Arya, and the producer, uh, Alireza uh, Shojanuri, are both longtime friends of mine. Uh, the, the wonderful composer, too, uh, Peyman Yazdanian, is a longtime friend. Uh, so let's uh, start right away. And uh, Mona, uh, it's great to see you and great to be with you to talk to you. Congratulations on the film. And my first question is, um, I know it's supposed to come from a real, a real incident uh, or a real uh, story. Tell us about that, if you would, please. Hello, good afternoon. And I pleasure, uh, I'm, and my honor that I, I'm be here. And I hope that we have uh, a good conversation. But I prefer to talk in Farsi, and thanks Mona that translate me, because I prefer to talk with uh, details uh, and my feeling, and I can uh, I can explain better in Farsi. So thank you, Mona. Uh, thank you, and uh, please uh, go on. خب من در مورد سوالی که ایشون کردن میخوام بگم که بله این یک قصه ای که بر اساس بر اساس یک قصه واقعی از یکی از نزدیکان من شکل گرفته که بیسش در واقع بر اساس اون هست Godfrey, you're right. This is a, the story of this film was inspired by a true story, the experience of someone who I know well and is very close to me. Uh, but I'd like to indicate that it's inspired by those true facts. اون قسمتی که در واقع زن میره از خانه سالمندان همسر سابقش رو میاره در خونه و ازش نگهداری میکنه. این دقیقا عین اتفاقیه که به شکل واقعی افتاده. Uh, the beginning of the story, when the, the female protagonist goes to the nursing home and brings her ex-husband home with her, is exactly a mirror of the true events that unfolded. The tangents that the storyline takes and other details that um, unfold as, as the film progresses are fictional details that have been added to the screenplay. Okay. That's it. Uh, tell us, please, what was it that uh, interested you most about this story, to start to tell this story? What drew you to this situation? 
این داستان چه جذابیتی برای شما داشت؟ چرا تصمیم گرفتین که این داستان رو به صحنه بیارین؟ واقعیتش اینه که این داستان یک داستان خیلی قدیمی توی خانواده ما بود و خیلی هم برای ما چیز عجیبی نبود به دلیل اینکه سالها باهاش زندگی میکردیم و فکر میکردیم که خب یه اتفاق خیلی ساده ایه. This was a very old story in our family. We had lived with the story for a very long time and had come to accept it as a very normal thing, a very simple event that had occurred. من شش سال پیش داشتم روی یک فیلمنامه دیگه ای کار می کردم که برای مشاوره رفتم پیش آقای کیارستمی و به عباس کیارستمی فیلمنامه رو دادم که بخونه و توی اون گفتگو با هم دیگه این داستان رو براش به عنوان یکی از خاطرات فامیلی تعریف کردم. Six years ago, I was working on another screenplay, and I took a draft of it to Mr. Kiarostami and asked him to look at it and give me some feedback. And while we were discussing that screenplay, I told him of the story as a, as a family memory. و عباس کیارستمی به من گفتش که این خیلی قصه جذاب و جسورانه ایه و خیلی متفاوت و تو چرا قصه ای رو که اینقدر نسبت بهش مسلطی و یک قصه خانوادگی اینو به تصویر نمی کشیم In that conversation Abbas Kiarostami told me that this is a very intriguing and engaging story and you speak of it with such confidence and knowledge why don't you focus on bringing this story to life و من بهش گفتم که نه این خیلی اتفاق عجیب غریبی نیست برای اینکه اصلا ما تو خانواده هم خیلی مثلا گفتگوی ویژه‌ای راجبش نشده و از روی این گفتگو گذشت و من در اون زمان به حرفای عباس کیارستمی گوش ندادم I pushed back and said that I didn't think this was a very unique story, that this was something that was not even, you know, discussed very much in our family. It was a given. And so that conversation ended. I didn't take his advice at the time and left it there. <laughs> ولی متاسفانه بعد از اینکه عباس کیارستمی از دنیا رفت و من خب خیلی حالم بد بود و اون قصه ای هم که براش تعریف کرده بودم هی نمیشد اون چیزی که دلم میخواست به لحاظ قصه و سناریو در نمی اومد after mr kiarostami passed and i was grieving um, the I attempted to to bring the story into a screenplay, but it wasn't coming together the way it was supposed to. رفتم یه روز دامه مغبرش و کی یه جای خیلی زیبایی در طبیعت و بهش گفتم در واقع با روحش صحبت کردم و گفتم آقا تکلیف منو روشن کن چرا قصه من در نمیاد و من چی کار کنم؟ Um, I went to his memorial, which is a very beautiful, scenic place, and, and I spoke to him, spoke to his spirit, and told him to, to give me some guidance. Why is this not coming together? Help me out here. And the time I went to Ali Reza Shujanuri, and the time I went to Ali Reza Shujanuri, I was in the road, really, in a very difficult way. This story was for me, and I had this story for me. علی رضای شجانوری تعریف کردم همین قصه یه خطی واقعی رو Uh, when I was coming back from that visit, I had gone with Ali Reza Shojanuri, and as I was coming back, the, the story, this incident of uh, family memory came, became very um, visible for me in my mind, and I, I told Ali Reza that story in a very brief synopsis. و به من گفت این خیلی قصه خوبیه چرا همینو کار نمی کنی؟ و گفتم که راست میگی هستی که بریم روی این کار کنیم گفت بریم و من از فردا در واقع پروسه نگارش و راه اندازی فیلم رو شروع کردم He also reacted in the same way and said that this is a very good story. You need to dig deeper, focus on this. And I asked him if he was willing to come on this journey with me. And the very next day, I started work on it and, and started putting the screenplay together. در واقع میتونم بگم که توجه عباس کیارستمی راجع به این قصه منو تشویق کرد و اینکه فکر کنم این میتونه خیلی قصه جالبی باشه. توی اون سالی که با هم گپ زدیم و خیلی متاسفم که موقعی که فیلم ساخته شد و به نمایش در اومد نبود که ببینه و ایرادات منو به هم بگه 
So I can say that it was really the attention that Apos Kiorostemi gave to this story and his uh, his support, his push that made it a reality. And um, it, it's very painful for me that he was not here to see the movie when it came to be and wasn't here to give me his critique of it. Uh, that's great. And you worked with the screenwriter on uh, doing the screenplay, didn't you? Uh, tell, tell us about that process and how the, the story developed it as you went, how, how it developed as you went along. Darbore Proseke, Darbore Nevishtan Filname, Karkadin, Bar Nevisande, Darbore Unporose, Baramun Tarif Kone. خیلی پرسه سختی بود برای من به دلیل اینکه من کلا هر قصه ای رو که کار میکنم حالا چه فیلم ساخته بشه چه فیلم ساخته نشه خیلی برای خودم کامل و شکل گرفته است It was a very challenging process for me because whenever I work on a screenplay whether the film gets made or not um, it is uh, It's very real to me. I, I, I can visualize it very easily. When I want to begin a screenplay or begin work on a story, I can visualize all aspects of it. The beginning, the end, the middle, the end, all of the characters, every detail is very real and visual for me. و وقتی که شما دارین به شکل مشترک با کسی کار میکنید یا یک متن یعنی یک قصه رو برای نفر تعریف میکنید و قراره که حالا اون هم تصورات خودش رو از قصه اضافه بکنه خیلی چلنجینگ میشه اون موقعی که میخواین But when you're working with a partner and you tell them a story and then they add their own interpretation and perspective to it, it's very difficult for your for the two perspectives to come together and to melt together. به خصوص که در مورد این نویسنده که من باهاش این بار کار کرده بودم اون خیلی شکل اجرایی نویسندگیش اینجوری نبود که با هم بشینیم گفته بکنیم من هی برای اون یه چیزی رو تعریف میکردم اون میرفت مینوشت و دوباره برای من میفرستد و این خیلی برای من کار دشواری بود Particularly this screenwriter, his process, his style was not for us to write collaboratively or worked collaboratively together in the moment. I would tell him a story. I would tell him my uh, views on it. And then he would go away and write the scenes and then come back and ask for feedback. And this was challenging. و در واقع این داستان تا زمان فیلمبرداری ادامه داشت برای اینکه خب یه چیزایی رو من باش موافق نبودم اون دوست داشت باشه یه چیزایی رو Um, در نهایت من میگفتم این اصلا با اون چیزی که من تو نظرم هست یکی نیست و به هر حال خیلی خیلی کش و قوس داشتیم اما um, نتیجه ای که الان دارم میبینم میتونم بگم که صد درصد اون چیزیه که خودم میخوام شاید غیر از مثلا یکی دو تا بخش که uh, فکر میکنم شاید میتونستم پافشاری بیشتری داشته باشم ولی در نهایت چون میگم قصه کاملا قصه ای بود که نسبت بهش تسلط داشتم و از گوشت و خونم بود برابرین نسبت بهش اون چیزی که الان خروجی خیلی راضی ام um, this push push and pull continued until filming started and there were certain aspects that he was very insistent on that I didn't agree to and vice versa uh, but I have to say that the final product as it exists right now is something that I'm very pleased with it, it represents the story that I have a lot of confidence in perhaps there are one or two aspects that I could have pushed back on a little harder but in the end the final product is very much reflective of the story that I had confidence in Great. Uh, yeah. که, uh, من از یه جایی به بعد که فیلم نامه تموم میشه و بازیگرام رو انتخاب میکنم uh, دیگه قصه رو در اختیار بازیگرا قرار میدم چون وقتی تازه قصه وارد شخصیت بازیگرا میشه و دیالوگ ها در uh, کاراکترهای خود بازیگرا قرار میگیره از اونجا به بعد هم یه اتفاقات دیگه ای میفته And it's important to note that once the screenplay is written and I have uh, cast my actors, I hand the story over to them and their interpretation of it and their embodiment of the story also adds a new dimension to it and takes it in a certain direction. 
Right, and that actually leads to another question I had, which is, um, did you write or did you develop this story with particular actors in mind? I mean, the actors in this are so good. Uh, I was wondering if you wrote if you wrote the parts for them, or uh, if you didn't, what what did they bring to the parts once you started working with them? شما وقتی فیلم نامه رو می نوشتین هنرپیش های خاصی در ذهن داشتین برای اون هنر، هنرپیش ها نوشتین یا اینکه بعد از اینکه هنرپیش ها فیلم نامه رو به دست گرفتن کلا جریان عوض شد در مورد رضا بابک که فریدون فیلم هست همسر سابق صد در صد رضا بابک انتخابم بود و همینطور خانم متمداریا که از نیمه نگارش در واقع دیگه مطمئن شدم که خانم متمداریا هست اما در مورد رضا تا بعد از اینکه فیلم نامه تموم شد هنوز نمیدونستم رضا کیه Uh, from the very beginning, Riva Babak, who plays Frey Dune, the ex-husband, was the actor that I had in mind, as well as Miss Muhammad Arya. I knew from the start that I wanted her to have the role that she has, but I did not have any particular thoughts um, or have anyone in mind for Riva, and that casting did not happen until after the screenplay was completed. And can you say what uh, each of the three actors brought to the the screenplay and to the to the to the development of these characters once you started filming har kudum az in honar pisha chi avordan be be in dastan va um ke juri dastan o avaz kardan baad az in ke film bardari aghaz shod um چیزی به یاد ندارم یعنی فکر نمی کنم که چیز خاصی تنها گرفتاری که من توی این فیلم داشتم که برای خودم خیلی جالب بودیم بود که من دلم میخواست که فریدون کاراکتر ضعیفتری از این چیزی که الان در حال حاضر هست باشه و رضا بابک که خب بازیگر فریدونه بسیار قبراق و سرحال تر از این چیزی هست که شما در فیلم میبینین و من خیلی سعی کردم که این رو برسونم و نزدیکش بکنم به یک آدمی که تواناییش کمه تنبای جسمیش تنبای جسمیش <تصفيق> Um, I had envisioned Feridun to be much more physically weak, uh, 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 much more feeble than um, what you see uh, in the film. And um, Reza Babak is actually a very vibrant person, uh, much more vibrant than, uh, than the role allows. And so I tried very hard to scale that in, rein him in, and um, for, the, for the meekness or physical uh, feebleness of the character to come through. و یه چیز دیگه ای که هست برای خودم خیلی جالبه رضا که سعید آقاخانی هست خیلی کاراکتر خود سعید آقاخانی محجوب و خجالتیه um, سعید آقاخانی who plays رضا uh, is actually a very reserved and shy person و به سختی کلمات عاشقانه و نگاه های عاشقانه میتونه از ازش بیاد بیرون وقتی که میخواستیم با یعنی بگیم که مثلا اینا رو بعد به فاطمه متمداریا بگه It was very hard for him to play the affectionate scenes to, to uh, deliver the dialogue uh, the affectionate dialogue or the um, long loving looks that he needed to give a Fatima Arias character مثلا اون جاهایی که بعد میگفت عزیزم جانم و اینا انقدر به سختی ازش میومد بیرون که خود این به نظرم یک لایه جالبی به کاراکتر رضا داد توی فیلم particularly the dialogue where he had to use terms of endearment like my dear my love it was very difficult for him to get those words out and i think that added a very interesting nuance to the character and to the performance و من اینو دوست دارم یعنی یک خجالت و شرمی توی رضا در زیر بنای عشقش هست که خیلی جالبه. I very much enjoyed that. There's a certain shyness and humility in him and in the performance that I think makes it very engaging. Yes. Um, also, the, the film starts at this nursing home, which I, I believe it, it seems to be in Tehran, and then they go to where the, the, the couple lives. And that seems to be a town outside of uh, Tehran, maybe in the north of Iran. That's what the geography looks like. Um, and the characters seem to be kind of middle class, lower middle class. 
Can you talk about something? Uh, can you tell us something about the specific geography of this story and also the, the characters and what their place in society is? به نظر آقای گادفری فیلم در تهران شروع آغاز میشه و خانه سالمندان در تهران است اما بعد نظر میاد که بقیه داستان بیرون از شهر توی شهر کوچیک تری اتفاق میفته درباره جغرافیات داستان و اینکه از لایف میدل کلاس از لایف اینکه درجه کلاس اجتماعی این خانواده برامون بگین نکته بعد اشاره‌ای که به نورس آب ایران کردن درسته یعنی این اینجا در واقع شمال ایران محسوب میشه و شمال ایران اینا شمالی نیستن اینا یه خانواده یعنی که مهاجرت کردن به شمال و خب توی فیلم معلومه از شکل زندگیشون لحجهشون و مدلی که هستن um, the, the majority of the story unfolds in, in the northern parts of Iran, but the family is not originally from the north. This is a family that has relocated there, and you can tell that from their accent and the way that they speak. و شمال ایران یک خصوصیتی که داره به خاطر نوع آب و هوا و فرهنگ اتفاقا خیلی بازی که داره اینه که آدما توش ریلکس ترن زندگی طبیعی تری دارن به طبیعت کلا نزدیک ترن و اون حد از مدرنیتی که در شهرهای بزرگ هست در شهرهای کوچک شمالی شما کمتر میبینید um, in the north of Iran, the lifestyle there, because of the weather and the culture, uh, the people are a lot more relaxed and um, they're much closer to nature and they haven't fully embraced all of the uh, technology and aspects of modern living that you might see in some of the big cities. و زندگی یعنی کسانی که تصمیم میگیرن از تهران یا شهرهای شلوغ به اونجا برن معمولا کاراکترهایی هستند که از شلوغی، هیاهو و وضعیت یکمی نابسامان شهرهای شلوغ خسته شدن و میخوان که یکم حاشیه نشینی آرام انجام بدن and normally the people who relocate there from Tehran or other major cities are people who are tired of the hustle and bustle and the crowds and um, the fast pace of living in these bigger cities and are looking for something uh, a little calmer, a little slower paced. و شما میبینید که اینها با اینکه مثلا توی یه خونه خیلی بزرگی دارن زندگی میکنن که حیات داره و یک خونه دربست و ویلاییه ولی آدم های خیلی ثروتمندی نیستن و این در and as you can see, the family lives in a very large house with a very large yard, uh, a villa um, in every sense of the word, but it is, they're not a very wealthy family and this type of housing, this type of lifestyle is very common in that part of Iran. خیلی موبایل تو زندگی اینا تعریف شاخصی نداره چیزی که خب امروزه توی زندگی ها خیلی اهمیت داره ولی میبینیم که مثلا شکو خیلی وقتا موبایلش رو جا میذاره موبایلش رو موبایل معمولی هاست رضا همینطور کلا زندگی خیلی ساده و به طبیعت نزدیکی رو اینا انتخاب کردن and you can see that mobile devices are not a large part of their, their life or this story um, like they would be for modern day living in a lot of the large cities. Shoku often forgets her phone, leaves it behind. Their phones are not the latest device. They've chosen a simpler um, way of life. شغل شکو رنگرزی گیاهی توی خونه است و اینکه یه سری از بچه ها رو جمع میکنه که این کار بهشون یاد بده و همه اینها یک جور نشاط و سادگی در کنارش داره که به کاراکتر شکو خیلی نزدیک بود و من خیلی جاهای مختلف رو گشتم برای اینکه یک لوکیشن مناسبی پیدا بکنم که اینا رو از تهران و شهر شلوغ دور کنم و بهترین جا که پیدا کردم یک همچین طبیعتی بود که با خصوصیت های زندگی شکو سازگار باشه um, organic dyes and she has gathered you know children who she's teaching this vocation to and um, it's reflective of the simplicity that she wants in her life and I searched a very long time it scouted many locations to find a location where the nature and the lifestyle reflected that simplicity and calm um, 
something I wondered about is that Mr. Faridun uh, seems uh, quite a bit older uh, than Chuko, and, and uh, whereas Reza is about her same age, it's, it, it appears. Is that uh, is that accurate? Is was the man much older when they were married, and did that age difference have something to do with the breakup of the marriage? Um. کاراکتر فریدون از شکو خیلی مسنتره اما رضا هم سنشونن این درسته وقتی که با هم یعنی تفاوت سنی خیلی زیاد بوده و آیا این دلیل یکی از دلایل به هم زدن به هم زدن رابطهشون بود یا اینکه نتونستن با هم زندگی کنن رابطه در واقع این یک عمد بود توش با تعجب سنهاشون و بچه ها که به نظر میرسه الان در فیلم که خب شکو در سن خیلی کم با یک مرد خیلی سن زیادتر از خودش ازدواج کرده نه الزامن این فاصله چون مثلا اگر این فاصله در سنهای بالا اتفاق بیفته ممکنه خیلی هم زندگی های خوشبختی به وجود بیاد ولی این زندگی شکو از آنچه که ما در فیلم میبینیم متوجه میشیم که شکو سن خیلی کمی داشته و با فریدون که مرد خیلی بزرگی بوده ازدواج کرده. It's not so much the age difference uh, that is the point here, uh, but the fact that Shuku was very young when she married Feridun. She married at a very young age and had children at a very young age. The age difference might be less of an issue if that marriage were to occur when they were both older. But the fact that Shuku entered into this marriage at such a young age is the basis of the story. و در واقع بعد از ازدواج و بچه دار شدن که خب فریدون هیسنش هم میره بالاتر و در واقع دیگه حالا شکو کم کم متوجه میشه که خودش کیه و چیه و زنانگیش رو دریافت میکنه و اینکه خب کجای این زندگی قرار داره تازه انگار متوجه میشه که در جای درستی نیست داده در زندگیش And after she is married and has children and as she finds herself and realizes what she wants from life and where she stands in life, um, it becomes clear to her that um, she is not in the life that she wants and that um, she's not in the situation that she wants to be in. و تصمیم به جدایی میگیره و خب جدایی توی اون سن با داشتن بچه و به حال شرایطی که هست خیلی کار سختیه فکر میکنم شاید همه جا ولی تو ایران به حال خیلی کار سخت دریه um, once she, deci- she decides to separate um, and um, separation especially when, when you're a mother and you have children is difficult and it's particularly difficult in Iran اما چیزی که برای من خیلی مهم بود و بهش اشاره نکردم به خصوص که حتی یه بخش هایی در فیلم نامه بود و من نخواستم که باشه اینه که اصلا دلیل جدایی این دو نفر به نظر من اهمیتی نداره مهم اینه که دو تا آدم از هم یک زمانی جدا شدن But what was important to me wasn't to dwell on the reason for the separation. It was even part of the screenplay, but I decided not to include it. Um, the reason was not relevant. Just the fact that the separation had occurred was important. و اینکه بعد از جدایی حالا حالا چطور با هم دیگه زندگی یعنی بتونن چطور مصالحه داشته باشن بعد از جدایی با هم دیگه و این اون نکته ای که توی فیلم بهش خیلی زیاد اشاره میشه که در واقع این رابطه قطع میشه بعد از جدایی and what i um, rather chose to focus on was the interaction or the relationship after separation and the fact that for a very long time they did not interact and they did not have a connection و خب مرد که خیلی مشخصه توی فیلم که راضی نبوده به این جدایی در واقع شرایطی رو به وجود میاره که بچه ها و مادر همو نبینن و همه از هم بیخبر باشن و یه جاهای شکو میگه من تو عکس میبینم که پسرم مثلا کچل شده اون حامله شده و در واقع یه جور نوع ارتباط برقرار کردن بعد از جداییه که برای من تمرکز بیشتری داشت Uh, Feridun, who was not happy with the separation, made sure that his children did not have a relationship with their mother. And um, if you'll remember, there is a scene in the film where she points out that she could only learn about their lives from photographs who got married, who had lost their hair. And um, so rather, my focus was on how that relationship was rebuilt or reestablished after the divorce. Chun Tui Iran. 
این یک متاسفانه سنت یا هر چی نمیدونم واقعا اسمش چیه ولی یک عادت یا یک رفتاری وجود داره در بسیاری از خانواده ها نه در همه خانواده ها وقتی که جدایی صورت میگیره کاملا ارتباطات دو تا خانواده و خود اون دو نفر به طور خیلی جدی خسمانه و قطع میشه In Iran, there's a tradition or a habit, I'm not quite sure what to call it, that once a separation or divorce occurs, all of the ties between the two families come to an end. There is no uh, connection or relationship once a separation has taken place. Yani, engar ye juri hame gozashte khodoshun ro az yad mibaram va mikhan ke qat konam. In a way, it's like people completely forget their past, the past that occurred before the separation, and that, you know, that life comes to its full end. Um, I, I thought it was interesting that, uh, that she accepts him, uh, or it's her idea, really, to bring him into her house. And it seems like a very compassionate thing to do, and one can understand that she had an emotional connection with him at one time that means something to her. But I was curious as to why Reza accepts to have his wife's ex-husband come into, into his house. Can, can you speak of that? Especially since the two men had a complicated kind of relationship in the past as well. Um, جا خب معلومه که شخصیت فاطمه به خاطر دلسوزی و یه فداکاری بزرگ تصمیم میگیره که فریدون رو بیاره تو خونه و دلایل اون دلایل تصمیم فاطمه بازن اما چرا رضا این قضیه رو قبول کرده مخصوصا وقتی که میفهمیم که رابطه رضا و فریدون تاریخچه طولانی و سختی داره چون رضا عاشق فاطمه است عاشق شکوه و, به و, و خیلی جاها میگه که من هر کاری که تو میکنی هیچی بهت نمیگم نه چون موافقم چون که دوستت دارم و این از اون تصمیماتیه که وقتی رضا میگیره خودش ولی دوچار تضاد میشه ما میبینیم در جاهای مختلف Because Reza loves Shoku and he often tells her in the film that, you know, whatever you do, I agree. I allow it not because I agree, but because I love you. And uh, we can see as the film unfolds that this is a once he's made this decision, um, he often finds himself struggling with it. و در واقع بعد از اینکه این تصمیم رو میگیره که معلومه با رضایت نبوده چون از همون روز اولی که فریدون میاد تو خونه حال رضا خوب نیست و خیلی معلومه که داره اونم با خودش کلنجاری میره که بتونه این ماجرا رو حس کنه ولی خب هی به تدریج این چالش بین این دو نفر زیاد میشه و به نظرم خیلی واضحه که رضا فقط برای شکوه که داره این کارا رو میکنه Once the decision is made, it's obvious that it wasn't with Riva's full approval um, or acceptance, and he struggles very hard to accept it. But as the story progresses, the tension and the challenges between the two male characters uh, become increase and become increasingly tense. Uh, yes, it, so um, This is a, a really fascinating aspect to it, the relationship between the two men. And I, I think that overall, the film is really notable for being very sympathetic to all of the characters. It doesn't favor one of, over the other. I think this kind of a compa- what I've call, called a compassionate gaze in Iranian film is uh, very distinctive about Iranian cinema. And uh, I think you're in a great tradition in a way. Uh, besides Mr. Kirastami, do you, are there other filmmakers or films that you thought about when you went about making this film? به غیر از کارهای آقای کیوا رستمی فیلم های دیگه یا فن فیلم سازی دیگه ای بود که به شما الهام داد وقتی که شروع کردین به, به ساختن این داستان. نه. No. من کلا توی فیلم قبلی من همینطور خیلی از یعنی خیلی الهام نمیگیرم از کسی بابت نوع فیلم سازیم یا شکل فیلم سازیم چیزی که میتونم فقط بگم اینه که خیلی علاقه من به سینمای ساده و بی تکلف هستم و خب الگوش رو در سینمای ایران میتونم 
حالا غیر از آقای غیر از سهراب شهید سالس که به حال در زمان من نبود ولی میتونم فقط بگم کیارستمی من فیلم ها شبیه فیلم های عباس کیارستمی اصلا نیست و خیلی سینما فاصله داره فیلم قبلیم این فیلم من مستندایی که میسازم اما سادگویی رو خیلی دوست دارم و در سینمای خودمون میتونم بگم حداقل در این سال ها اگر بخوام بگم واقعا غیر از کیارستمی و صفیه یزدانیان که خب به حال ما در یه جوری هم دوره های هم هستیم کسی دیگه ای نیست البته که من میتونم بگم اگر بخوام به بخش داره طولانی میشه اوکی بله بله اگر بخوام که بگم در سینمای ایران غیر از عباس کیارستمی چه کسی برای من خیلی درخشانه داریوش مرجویی هستش Um, so I don't, I don't really seek inspiration in, in the work of other filmmakers in my work, but I have to say that I'm very much a fan of simple storytelling, simple cinema. And perhaps, uh, you know, that's reflective also in the work of Sohrab uh, Shahid Salis, who was before my time. Um, but I think, you know, the, the biggest inspiration for me is, is simplicity in storytelling. And um, other than Kiara Stemi's work, who I would like to point out, my work and his work are, are quite different. There, there's a, quite a bit of distance in, in our style of filmmaking. But another role model that I can point to is Dariush uh, Mehrjui. Yes. Um I'm going to bring in a question from the audience now, uh, and it's actually something uh, a viewer is asking about that I was also curious about, which is, uh, can you speak about the the uh, storyline, the part of the story involving the younger woman, the niece, I believe, and uh, what what all that represents? Um, در باره داستان اون شخصیت زن دختر جوونی که تو فیلم می‌بینیم برادر زاده شکو به نظر میرسه درباره اون داستان و اهمیت اون داستان برامون بگید اون داستان در واقع میشه گفت که یک جوری انگار که گذشته شکو دختری که داره یه تصمیماتی میگیره که مادرش راضی نیست کاری رو میکنه که شکو در گذشته نکرده یعنی شکو احتمالا در گذشته با حرف مادرش پوش داده و ازدواج کرده و این حالا داره با دوست پسرش فرار میکنه و در واقع یک جور دختریه که نسبت به شرایط زندگی خودش تغییراتی رو میخواد انجام بده و هنوز خیلی شجاعتش رو نداره برای همین یه جاهایی داره دروغ میگه و میره با دوست پسرش That story points to or reflects perhaps uh, Shoku's own past, uh, a young girl who is um, making a decision that goes against what her mother wanted, what her mother wants and pushing back against it, perhaps something that Shoku didn't do when she was a young woman and a young girl who wants uh, a totally different direction in her life, a change in her life, but um, she is resorting to, to lying and, and, you know, hiding from her mother. in order to bring that about. و در واقع شکو داره یه جوری اون چیزایی رو که خودش تجربه نکرده رو بهش آموزش میده یعنی بهش میگه که کاری رو که فکر میکنی درسته اون کار بکن ولی با مادرت صحبت کن و نظر که مادرت از دل خور بشه یعنی در عین حال هم داره موضوع گفتگو رو به این دختر یاد میده چیزی که در زندگی خودش اتفاق نیفتاده هم داره بچه مادر بودن خودش رو نسبت به این زندگی میکنه با این دختر زندگی میکنه چیزی که در زندگی خودش دچار کم بود بوده و هم داره بهش یاد میده که چجوری خواسته های خودت بیست So Shoko is giving her advice, um, advising her to do the very things that she didn't do and she didn't experience as a young woman. She tells her to talk to her mother, to be honest with her mother. And in a way, she's also um, living out her maternal instincts, living out her role as a mother um, with this young girl, something that she was cheated out of in her own experience with her um, children. And um, she's also telling her to stand up for what she wants. Um, can I ask you about uh, the, uh, what has happened with this film in Iran? Has it come out there? And if so, uh, what kind of reaction it's gotten and what people have said about it? 
Um, این فیلم در ایران اکران شده و اگر شده واکنش بینندگان چی بوده؟ این فیلم در جشنواره فجر اکران شد و بعد از اون به دلیل کرونا اکران آنلاین پیدا کرد. توی ایران واکنش های جالبی این فیلم داره. یه ده خیلی فیلم رو دوست دارن و به نظرشون یک موضوعیه که به شدت جامعه بهش نیاز داره و آدم ها دوستش دارن. Uh, the film premiered or was screened at the Farj Film Festival and after that, because of Corona, moved to online screenings. And um, there has been some very interesting reactions to it. One group of viewers very much like the story and think that this is a, a truth that um, ne needs to be discussed, a truth in Iranian life, in Iranian society that very much needs to be brought to the forefront. و هستن کسایی که به شدت با فیلم موافقن و معتقدن من دارم دو همسری رو رواج میدم در این فیلم موافقن یا موافق نیستن Um, and then there is a group, uh, other group who is very much opposed to the film and think that um, I am promoting or depicting polygamy in the film. و در واقع میتونم بگم که من در زمان اکران فیلم مجبور شدم که پست اینستاگرام رو ببندم از بس که از این جریان فوش خوردم. Um, and to be honest, while the film was being screened, I had to shut down my Instagram account uh, because of all of the profanity and insults that I was receiving because of the storyline. That's amazing. <laughs> That's really <Yes>. amazing. <laughs> Did you think when you were making the film that some people would interpret it that way as about polygamy? That never crossed my mind. هیچ شما وقتی که داشتین این داستان رو میساختین فکر میکردین که فکر میکردین که برداشت مردم این باشه که شما در این پلگمی رو یا دو همسری رو هرگز یعنی من در پس سرم هم همچین فکری نمیکردم Not at all I couldn't even fathom that that's what the interpretation would be و ازش شکه شده بودم از تحلیل های دو همسری یعنی هر چی میگشتم تو فیلم که یه جایی پیدا کنم که بگم اینجا مثلا من یه گافی دادم که اشتباه شده پیداش نمی کردم And I was very much shocked by this analysis and interpretation and spent a lot of time reviewing the film and seeing if there was a, a, a misstep or an ambiguity in, in any of the scenes that could in some way uh, indicate that I was trying to promote polygamy, but I, could, I can't tell where that is coming from. Uh, that's, that's crazy. Uh, let me just ask you a bit about uh, the position of uh, being a woman filmmaker in Iran currently. I mean, Iran does have some prominent uh, female directors, but uh, they're still in the minority. Is it, is it easier now making a film for women directors or is it getting harder? What's your position on that? What's your view on it from your, your perspective? نظر شما درباره شرایط کاری برای کارگردان کارگردانای زن در ایران امروز چی راحت تر شده کار شما آسون تر شده یا هنوز سخته ببین فیلم سازی توی ایران خیلی کار سختیه اصولا چه برای زن چه برای مرد به دلیل مقررا یعنی قوانین عجیب و غریبی که ما برای ساخت فیلم داریم که خودمونم هنوز نمیدونیم دقیقا این قوانین یعنی چه چیزی مجازه چه چیزی مجازه Filmmaking in Iran in general is very difficult for both male and female uh, filmmakers and that very much has to do about the rules that surround the filmmaking industry and that you can never tell what is going to be allowed and what is not going to be allowed. در سینما هم همینطور یعنی تمام مدیران ما مرد هستند تمام وزرای ما در حوزه فرهنگ مرد هستند تمام تصمیم گیرنده های ما در هر شورایی که میرین مرد هستند خب یک کمی حضور زنان کار دشواریه um. It is very much a male-dominated industry, and all the gatekeepers at every level, at every stage, the gatekeepers are men. So therefore, it adds a, an extra layer of challenge, an extra dimension of challenge for a female filmmaker. اما در همه شرایط سخت من میخوام به شما بگم حدود چهارده تا دوازده تا کارگردان زن آل در سینمای دار 
داستان یار زیاد یعنی قابل شمارش من الان نمیدونم چقدر شاید مثلا من چه پنجاه نفر مستند ساز خیلی ما در سینما ایران داریم که خانم حمایت میکنن Despite all of these challenges uh, and and obstacles, um, I have to tell you that there's at least a dozen very active female filmmakers in Iranian cinema, and many more, at least 40 to 50 documentarians, female documentarians, who are working in the field right now. And even beyond that, even more than the documentarians, are fe- uh, women who are making short films. That, that's very good to hear. This is very uh, complicated in Iran. <laughs> <laughs> it's always complicated in Iran. I, I know yes. that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Mona, I just one final question. It's been great talking to you. But uh, one viewer asked, uh, what are you working on next? I know it was quite a, 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 a long time between your first film and this one, your second. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people hope it's not going to be so much time before the next one. Can you tell us if you're working on something now? درباره پروژه بعدیتون برامون بگیم و امیدواریم که صبری که ما بعد بکنیم بین این فیلم و پروژه بعدی خیلی طولانی مدت نباشه. سینمایی دارم که پروانه رفتم و فیلم نامش تموم شده متاسفانه کرونا باعث شد بسازم چون فیلم توی یونان هستش یک خانواده ایرانی هستند که در میگیر میفتن و مجبور میشن برای رفتن غیر قانونی توی جنگل خودشون رو برسونن به کشور آلمان من یه چیز حدود دواز... حدود هشت... حدود نه ساله که دارم رو موضوع مهاجرت غیر قانونی کار میکنم یک مستند ساختم چهار سال پیش در آلمان قبل از بن... پنج سال پیش قبل از بنفشه آفریقایی و خیلی به طور جدی دارم رو موضوع مهاجرت های غیر قانونی کار میکنم فیلم نامه نوشته شده پروانه ساختم گرفته شده یک محصول مشترک بین ایران و یونان که متاسفانه به خاطر کرونا متوقف شده و ما منتظر اولین فرصت هم. گفتین چند ساله در این در روی سوشه ماجر نو ساله, ساله. ساله. Okay. so i have completed my next screenplay it is uh, actually a film uh, set in greece and production on it has been delayed because of the pandemic all the permits are in place all the planning for it is in place but we haven't yet been able to begin production because of the pandemic the story focuses on an iranian family um refugees in greece who then have to um Uh, escape through the woods or travel through the woods to try to enter Germany. And this issue of illegal immigration um, or migration is something that I've been working on for nine years. Uh, also uh, made a documentary about it. Um, but this is a, a co-production between um, uh, Iran and Greece. And, um, you know, uh, it will begin go- or go into production as soon as the conditions allow. Uh, great. I'm very glad to hear about that. That sounds fascinating. But Mona, it's great to talk to you. I will say good uh, good day to you and uh, thank you for being a part of this. And please tell Alireza hello for me. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> I'm very glad to be talked to you. Well, thank you. And I hope I'll see you in Tehran before long.